Welcome to Apex, my name is Jacob, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the most beneficial, fundamental nutrient that you've probably never heard of, how it can make you superhuman, why you're probably deficient, and how you can get more in your diet through animal-based foods. What is this miracle nutrient I'm referring to? It is called coenzyme Q10, AKA COQ10. And this is something I had never heard of until a fellow member of our tribe cued me into this, and I started researching and digging into it, and what I discovered, actually shocked me and that's what I'm going to share with you right now. So what exactly is COQ10? Well it's a naturally occurring compound that's found throughout the body and it's found in the highest amounts in the heart, liver, kidney, and pancreas. So fair enough that sounds good and all but what exactly does it do? Well this is where it gets extremely interesting and this is where I started to be kind of shocked when I started finding out all the amazing stuff that COQ10 actually does. So in a nutshell, it helps generate and transfer energy in your cells by producing the antioxidant ATP. Now, if you don't know what ATP is, it is a molecule that stores and transfers energy in cells. It's often referred to as the cell's energy currency, and it is found in all living organisms. So to simplify that even further, it is extremely freaking important. Now, COQ10 also acts as an antioxidant, and it protects cells from oxidative stress. And on top of that, it also converts down into other molecules which help with blood circulation. Now, based off that very simplified explanation, you can see how this is a very, very important nutrient. And being deficient in that can lead to a bunch of negative health outcomes. And to highlight some of those, it can lead to things like cancer, type 2 diabetes, neurodegenerative disorders, like vision problems, seizures, intellectual problems. It's been associated with several different heart-related conditions, as well as blood clots and abnormal clotting in the blood, kidney dysfunction, muscle weakness, loss of or involuntary motor functions, as well as lung diseases, things like CO OPD and asthma. So to put that in very simple terms, this is a nutrient that you absolutely do not want to be deficient in. However, most Americans, because of our diet and the lack of COQ10 containing foods, we are deficient in this very fundamental nutrient. And there are several factors that play into the deficiency of this nutrient. One of them being age. As we age, our body's ability to produce COQ10 diminishes. Certain chronic conditions can lower COQ10 levels. Oxidative stress, cell damage, and free radicals in the body can also lower levels. Statins are a group of drugs that are notorious for lowering levels of COQ10 in the body. And as I mentioned before, our modern diets are lacking in this fundamental nutrient. And that's probably one of the most substantial factors, but when you tack on all these other things and you consider that most Americans are suffering from at least one chronic disease. Most Americans are also on pharmaceuticals. There's a lot of Americans on statins. And there's a lot of Americans that are suffering from inflammation, free radical damage, and oxidative stress in the body. And a lot of this comes from the hyper-processed food we eat, the toxic stuff that's in the food, all these artificial flavorings, sweeteners, additives, preservatives, all the pesticides and herbicides that are on the food, the fact that the food is grown in nutrient-depleted soil, and that soil is doused with synthetic fertilizers, which the plants then absorb, and that stuff makes its way onto your plate. And hidden within all that are things like PFAs, forever chemicals, heavy metals, aflatoxins, and mycotoxins. And as humans, we're pretty resilient. I mean, we can handle quite a bit. Our body is made to detox bad stuff when it goes into our body. But when you're getting hit from every single angle, and that just includes the food, that's not even talking about all the stuff we're exposed to every single day through like exposure to our skin, the stuff we put on our skin, cosmetics, lotions, creams, shampoos, conditioners, laundry detergent, all this stuff is getting absorbed into our bodies and is causing oxidative stress. And the lack of this nutrient in our diet, it's really easy to see how we could be very, very deficient in this and how that in itself could lead to very bad health outcomes. So now that we know of all the horrible things that can happen to us if we don't have this nutrient in our diet and if we're deficient in it, what are the benefits of it if we do have enough in our diet? Well, first of all, it can help restore optimal energy production. And that's an amazing thing because most Americans these days are pretty sedentary and very lethargic, and most people lack the drive and the willpower to get up and exercise and move their body. So it makes you wonder if maybe that could be caused from COQ10 deficiency. Having enough of this in your diet can also reduce oxidative damage and is very likely to reduce your risk of contracting chronic conditions in the first place. It could also help treat heart failure, which I think goes without saying is very, very important because if we don't have proper heart health, then we cease to exist. It's also been shown to help with fertility by maintaining the quality of the egg and improving sperm quality and count. It supports skin health, reduces migraines. It can improve 
exercise performance by decreasing oxidative stress and improving mitochondrial function. It helps with diabetes management. It can play a very important role in cancer prevention by blocking the growth of cancer cells. It benefits brain health by lowering oxidative stress and reducing harmful compounds in the body. And it has also been shown to have a protective effect on the lungs. Obviously, those are some amazing benefits. And I think we could all benefit from getting more of this in our diet because whether we know it or not, there's a pretty good chance that we actually are deficient in this very fundamental and beneficial nutrient. So with all that said, how in the world do we get more of this in our diet? Well, luckily, that is extremely easy especially if you're carnivore, because it just so happens that carnivore foods have more of this nutrient than any other food on the planet. So in order of priority and nutrient density, let's start from the top. Beef heart and heart from other animals contains the highest amount of COQ10 more than anything else I'm going to talk about in this video. And once I get through this list, I'm also going to go over some additional benefits of consuming heart and why we should all be consuming more of it in our diet. So going on down the list here, the other foods that are very high in COQ10 are beef liver, chicken heart, chicken liver, Reindeer has quite a bit in it. Beef, red meat, quite a bit of it in that. Pork, chicken, lard, butter, egg yolks, mackerel, getting into the fish now, sardines, and salmon. All right, so you can see that organ meats are going to be the highest in it, followed up with red meats, then pork and chicken, and then seafood. So since heart is the highest in COQ10 out of all the other foods on the list, let's go back to that and let's talk about some additional benefits of consuming heart. Now, one thing that we often forget and something that is very, very important is that heart is not just muscle. It also contains a ton of nerves and arteries. And nerves and arteries are made up of three different types of collagen. And collagen is another very important nutrient that most Americans are deficient in. And it's also another nutrient that gradually declines as we age. And as a matter of fact, the heart structure is made up of collagen. So by consuming heart, you're not only getting all the COQ10, you're also getting a bunch of collagen in three different very fundamental forms. The top of the heart also has quite a bit of fat, and since that fat is animal fat, that's going to contain a lot of saturated fat and cholesterol, which is very important for brain health, proper hormone function, it aids in the healing process, and if you're carnivore, or following a low carb, zero carb diet, it's also gonna be a very important fuel source and source of nutrition. Heart also contains magnesium and potassium, which are two very fundamental and important nutrients. And magnesium specifically is responsible for over 300 complex functions in the body and also helps carry the electrical signals to your heart. So being deficient in magnesium or potassium can lead to very bad health outcomes. And this is something I'm very familiar with because back when I was sick, I had a magnesium and a potassium deficiency, and I can tell you firsthand, it is an absolute nightmare. And while we're on the topic, another really fun fact for you is that the left ventricle of the human heart contains the most magnesium stores of any other part in your entire body. So based on that, you can see how magnesium is very, very fundamental in human health. Consuming heart will also get you ample amounts of B vitamins and choline, as well as iron, copper, and selenium. So based on all that information, it's very easy to see how COQ10 can play a very important role in human health. And it's also very easy to see how by simply adopting a carnivore diet can allow you to get more COQ10 by default. Because what I've noticed for most people that go carnivore, and this was definitely the case with me, is that not only are you consuming a lot more meat, and specifically red meat, which is one of the meats that is higher in COQ10 out of most of the other ones, but most people also transition over to eating a more nose to tail approach. And that includes adding more organ meats in there. And along with organ meats comes things like heart and liver, which are two of the organs that are highest in COQ10. And when I was researching this, this is one of the big realizations I had. And this is one of the reasons why it really started to shock me is because when I came to carnivore, I had a really bad heart condition. I had terrible heart palpitations, I had an irregular heartbeat, I had supraventricular tachycardia, which is essentially your heart going through bouts of very irregular and very fast, ineffective heartbeats. And I can tell you from dealing with that for about a year, that is absolute hell. And I do not wish that on anybody. That's probably one of the worst times in my life. But by adopting a carnivore diet and also supplementing with magnesium on the side, I was able to completely heal and reverse that chronic condition. And that is a condition that my cardiologist said was going to require a pacemaker and ablation in order for me to recover from. Now, thank goodness that by the time he had mentioned this to me, I had already started doing my own research. And by that point, I had basically decided that I was either going to die or fix it myself because I was not going to go through with those surgeries. But it's really wild to think about the fact that my cardiologist was recommending these invasive procedures, these life altering procedures, and saying that that was the only fix. And he he literally told me that diet and nutrition had no effect on what I was experiencing. And thinking about this now, knowing what I know now about COQ10 and magnesium, potassium, and all the other vitamins and minerals that I wasn't getting on a standard American diet and bodybuilding diet, it really makes me wonder if the fact that I was getting 
COQ10 and all these other vitamins and minerals, if that played a very important role in allowing the neurotransmitters to function optimally. Because something else I thought about when I was researching this is that I was not only eating an ample amount of red meat, which has quite a bit of COQ10 in there, but I also adopted a more nose to tail approach. And I was eating quite a bit of heart and I was eating a ton of liver because those things sounded really good to me. And when I started carnivore, I basically was eating intuitively. And organ meat sounded good for pretty much every single meal for at least the first year and maybe even the first two years of me being carnivore. So I wonder if that was my body's way of telling me that I need these nutrients. And when I started consuming them, my body was just craving them more and more and more until one day... That stuff just didn't sound good to me anymore. And I kind of scaled way back on them. And now I just include them whenever they sound good. But I can say with 100% certainty that the diets I was following before coming to carnivore did not have sufficient amount of COQ10 at all. Hands down, full stop. So I can pretty much guarantee that I was deficient in this very important nutrient. And if you're watching this and thinking about your diet and the fact that you might fall into this camp as well, you might see some very drastic improvements by including more of these meats in your diet. And something else that really hit home for me and made me think is that I also follow another YouTube channel by the name of Homestead Howe. And the person that runs that channel is named Kerry Mann. And if you're not familiar with Kerry and Homestead Howe, I highly recommend looking up his channel and following him. As a matter of fact, I'll tag his channel in the description below. But when he came to carnivore, he had congestive heart failure. And through adopting a carnivore diet, and I think he's been carnivore for like a year, a couple years now, he has completely stopped the progression of his congestive heart failure. And not only has he stopped it, he has actually gained some of his heart function back. And just like with my situation, thinking about this, I'm wondering, if maybe it has something to do with the fact that he was getting more collagen, he was getting more of the vital nutrients that are very essential for proper nerve health, and by adopting a carnivore diet and focusing on red meats and organs, he was naturally getting more COQ10 in the diet. And I don't remember where I heard this, but somebody once told me very early in my carnivore journey that if you want to heal a part of your body, it doesn't matter what it is, pick a part of your body if you want to heal it. Consume that part in your diet. So in other words, if you want to heal your liver, consume liver. If you want to heal your heart, consume heart. If you want to heal your kidney, consume kidney. Or if you want to promote and benefit the functions of those organs or of those body parts, consume the associated body part from an animal. And looking back on my diet and my healing journey, I can say unequivocally that has been the case for me because I saw the most benefits of targeted healing through the consumption of the associated part that I was trying to heal. And one additional point to note is that this does not just apply to us as humans, it also applies to our dogs. So strategically including small amounts of organ meats in our dog's diet can have the same benefits on them as it does on us. So if you have a dog that's suffering from a heart condition, diabetes, kidney disorders, or any of the other chronic conditions I mentioned earlier, as long as you're feeding your dog a species appropriate diet full of meat and not kibble, you might see some really profound benefits by adding heart and other organ meats in the dog's diet. So if you found this information useful and you got some value out of this, comment COQ10 down below so we can bump the algorithm and push this out to benefit more people. And let me know in the comments if you're already including COQ10 rich foods in you and your dog's diet. And if not, do you plan to include them? If you haven't done so already, be sure to like, subscribe, join the Apex Tribe, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, peace out.